welcome everyone who are here for today's webinar. We will start in about a minute or so, and before then we might as well get some housekeeping things out of the way. So first and foremost, thank you everyone for attending tonight. My name is Madeline Wolski. I am the business librarian here at Champaign Public Library, and I am thrilled to provide this webinar in collaboration with the Brand Hub at the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. So this is creating a winning social media strategy for your brand with Marissa Peacock. So a little bit of library housekeeping. We are open to the public and we are also here for your virtual needs. So if you have any questions, maybe you want to dive deeper into some social media strategy, have questions about, well, maybe you want to backtrack and learn exactly how you can best use some social media platforms for your brand or business, you're more than welcome to schedule a one on one consultation with any of our very qualified and wonderful librarians here at the library. And you can get in contact with us um, in person over the phone. Um, through email, chat during our open hours, or booking an appointment over on our website at champagne.org slash book a librarian. And we're here to help, and we're pretty excited overall to help suit your needs. So without further ado, Marissa Peacock is the amazing lecturer who's here this evening. We have done some collaborations previously with Logic, and I have to be honest, Marissa is one of the most engaging lecturers that I've had the pleasure of listening and learning from um, in regards to social media. And she is a full time lecturer at the University of Illinois and also this chief strategist for Strategic Peacock. So, Marissa, thank you so much for coming this evening. Um, I know it's it's hard to give up a Monday evening. So many things to do nowadays, but really appreciative of you being here. So, I will let you go ahead and take center stage. And I also one one more thing. I want to encourage everyone, if you have any questions, comments, want to engage with others, feel free to put it in a chat. Um, I will be monitoring the chat tonight, and please feel free to ask questions that you might have or, or voice thoughts or concerns, um, and I can relay that to Marissa. So, fantastic. <laughs> All right. So, yay. Well, happy to be here, everyone. Um, Thanks for coming and joining me and hanging out with me on a Monday evening, on a chilly evening. Um, so yeah, so um, I just wanna give a shout out to the Hub for Brand Innovation and Advertising Technology, which is a partnership that happened, um, that formed in 2020 uh, between the Charles H. Sandage Department of Advertising and the College of Media with the Siebel Center for Design and Technology Services. Um, and so we are um, sort of a consortium that's hoping to or trying to integrate resources for student learning, faculty research, um, and uh, community engagement um, in the CU area. So um, I, I welcome you uh, to, to learn more uh, about them. Real quick about me. Um, I'm a full-time lecturer in the Department of Advertising, as, as Madeline said, um, and I've also, um, for the past more than 10 years, um, have had my own social media consultancy. And I work with organizations of all shapes and sizes um, to help on, uh, to optimize their online presence. And that usually includes social media, um, it usually includes you know, web content, um, and you know, so everything in between. <laughs> um, so when we talk about social media, I, I, I think we can get very overwhelmed, right? Um, that it's the end all be all of social, of, a, you know, online marketing and it's not. Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, I just like to remind people that it's a touch point. It's not the touch point. It's not a magic bullet. Um, you still have to, you know, uh, feed and water it and, you know, watch it grow. Um, but when done well, it can do a lot for your business. Um, but if social media isn't your thing, and at the end of this presentation, if you're still unconvinced of how to use social media strategically for your business, and you just don't want to invest the time and energy, that's okay. Um, obviously, you, you may have to invest effort and energy into other areas to sort of offset 
um, you know, any benefits that social media would have brought you, but don't do social media if you don't want to, right? It, it's a huge investment of time and energy and sometimes money. Um, and we, you know, again, <laughs> the, our, the best things that we can do for our, for, our, for our business come from those activities in which we truly enjoy um, and want to put our time and effort towards. Um, so I want, I put that out as a caveat because um, I think that's important to know. I think it's really easy in today's landscape to really get caught up um, in social media and you know all the amazing things that it can do. Um, and but uh, let's remind ourselves. Let's kind of bring it down a little bit and and uh, remind ourselves that it's just one touch point of many that we have at our disposal when we are promoting our business. All right. That said, haha. <laughs> um, 91% of businesses use social media, right? So it doesn't mean that they're doing it well. It doesn't mean that they enjoy doing it. It's just that they have decided that social media is, you know, one of the things that they want to do um, to use to amplify their brand, um, to talk about their products and services, and to connect with an audience um, that is interested in what they have to do. Um, and again, so a lot. this number has increased steadily over the years, I want to say within the last two years, it was kind of hovering around the 88% mark. We finally have tipped the scales to 90%. And again, that speaks to sort of the proliferation of, of social media. But the idea that there's not just one social media network as well. So there's many more today than there were the other, you know, last year or the year before. And there will probably be more tomorrow in, in a year. Um, so social media is, you know, is what you sort of make out of it. But, um, you know, 91% of businesses say that they're using it. Um, so, you know, again, it's something to keep in, in perspective. When uh, we think of social media and businesses, we want to um, think about what it what's in it for the customer. And so Sprout Social, um, which is a social media platform, they do uh, industry research um, and then their latest index, they have uh, released the, the, the data of the type of actions that are most likely to motivate um, uh, followers to become customers, right? So this is not customers who are following you, but followers who follow you and are interested and want to learn more. And, you know, in social media is being used to convert them into taking that plunge to signing up to learning more about your, your products and services. Um, and those behaviors, you know, are include a variety of things. They're none, none overwhelmingly so. Um, and, and again, that, that speaks to you know, that there are different ways that people use social media. So there's not just one thing that you can do on social media that's going to, you know, to, to, to make everyone fall in love with you. Um, but if you are going to use social media, the things that you can do to encourage um, customer-like behaviors um, include responding to customer service questions in a timely manner. Um, we have, as consumers, have been uh, sort of conditioned to expect immediate gratification and immediate communication. Um, through social media. And sometimes when we don't get a reply from an email or our calls go unanswered, we turn to social media for that instant connection. Um, and so that expectation is there with the consumer that they want to hear from you, um, you know, in regard to any of their questions or their concerns. Um, demonstrating an understanding of what the customer or the, what the followers need and want. So this speaks highly to relevancy. So you may love your product or your service, um, but you really need to talk about what it, what's in it um, to the customer. How is this adding value? How is it going to save them time? How is it going to save them money? How is it going to improve the quality of their life? Um, so really tailoring your content around those types of, of relevant needs. Um, creating more culturally relevant content. Um, and, you know, this is, this is great. I mean, we want to make sure that we are representing our audience um, uh, effectively um, in the images that we use, the videos that we, we show, um, making sure that we're reflecting, you know, who our target customer is um, so that they can see themselves um, using our product or buying uh, or, you know, or, or um, signing up for our services. So again, we, we want to make sure that we're, we're, we're understanding who our audience is and designing our content to reflect that. Um, 
educational content about a product or service, really showing people, well, how does it work? Why do I need this? Um, we can't just expect them to know there's a story that we want to tell. Um, and then you kind of going off of the first one, engaging directly with followers. It is called social media for a reason. Um, and that social part sometimes um, gets overlooked, right? And so we are social beings by nature. And so you'll often hear me use the metaphor of, you know, you're at a cocktail party or you're at a networking event. You're not just going to talk about yourself. You're not just going to say nothing. Um, you're going to interact, you're in going to engage. The same is true for social media. It's just taking that networking event or cocktail party or happy hour and, you know, putting it in an online format. The same behaviors apply um, and, and should, you know, and should ap apply to how you interact with people. Um, conversely, um, you know, when we think about what makes someone want to follow a brand on social media, um, they, uh, once they do, they're more likely to display other behaviors, right? And so if, uh, when a consumer follows brands on social media, they're more likely to visit your website or download your app. Um, to buy from your brand. So there's a, you know, there's a very strong correlation to me, to someone following a brand on social media and the likelihood that I will eventually buy from them, right? Um, and again, you know, sometimes we can tune out that content, um, but sometimes we're there for a really specific reason. Um, we're there to gather information. So if I'm following a brand on social media, maybe I'm going to choose them over their competitor because I'm, I'm engaging with their content or I'm seeing the, dif the, the stark differences between the two. Um, I may visit the store in, in person. And obviously the last couple of years or last year and a half or so, this has been a little bit more difficult. Um, but especially now when people are sort of more eager to, to leave their house and, and go visit a store, it's kind of more relevant than ever. Um, people really do want that, that personal touch. Um, you're going to become a more loyal customer, right? If I buy from you once and I enjoy it and I see that you have a new product or a new service or you've added something, um, you know, to, to the experience, um, I may want to be, you know, a part of that again and again. So, Following someone, on, following a brand on social media can lead to those loyal consumer behaviors. Um, and then, even though it's it's at the the bottom of of these stats, I do consider this one to be the most important um, in amplification. In that, if someone follows you on social media, they're more likely to recommend you to your friends, to their friends and family. Um, and that has a lot of social proof. Um, and by social for social proof, I mean we like when people that we trust give us recommendations, right? We're gonna watch that movie. We're, you know, we're gonna buy that pair of jeans. We're gonna go, you know, uh, you know, use that service for, you know, for a particular thing based off of what our friends and family um, have recommended to us um, because we trust them, because we value their opinion, because they have demonstrated to us previously um, that they know what they're talking about. So that word of mouth, that referral is really strong, um, especially when it comes to social media followers. I mean, how many of us have always said, you know, oh, I saw something on social media or I saw this or someone was talking about this. Um, that is that power of persuasion. Um, and that social proof is really strong with social media users. So that was a lot of information. <laughs> um, and But it leads us to this question of how can you efficiently and effectively create, manage, and measure your social media campaigns so that you're, all, you're adding value, but also getting results. One of the biggest challenges that small businesses face, or businesses of any size, I should say, is that they don't always know if it's working. Um, that's probably the biggest question that a lot of my clients sort of posed in the beginning, which was, I'm on Facebook or I'm using Instagram, but I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know you know, if it's doing what it's should, supposed to be. And that's a very important question. Um, and a lot of times brands don't take the time to sort of ask themselves, what am I trying to accomplish by being on social media, right? And we do this for other things. If we're going to spend money on a TV commercial or we're going to put up a billboard or put an ad in a print magazine, we sort of understand why we're doing that. But when we use social media, we're not always asking those strategic probing questions like, why am I here? Why are we doing this? Um, we're just sort of kind of throwing a lot of things at the wall and hoping something sticks 
which will then be an indicator to us that, oh, we should continue doing this. So if you are one of these people who is asking yourselves, you know, is it working? Am I doing it right? How do I know? All right, let's, let's back it up. Let's, let's start, let's kind of work backwards. Why are you on social media to begin with? What is the point? Um, and I'm not talking about the existential <laughs> reason for being, but what is, what are you trying to accomplish? Um, you know, do you want to drive traffic to your website? Are you trying to sell more product? Are you trying to increase brand awareness? Are you trying to establish yourself as a thought leader? Do you want to engage customers and have, you know, cool conversations? And you might say, well, Marissa, this is obvious. Of course I want all of this. Who wouldn't? Um, but, and that's great if you're answering yes to all these questions, but when you are putting together your content um, and figuring out what you're going to share on social media, how often are you aligning that content to these goals? Um, and chances are, if you're here, maybe there's a little bit of a misalignment or an unalignment, in any, if that's a word, um, <laughs> uh, be between these things. Like, oh, I don't always tell people what to do or include a call to action, um, or I'm not always there telling my story. Um, so again, just revisiting these questions can give you some insight um, into, is it working? You know, am, you know, is what I'm doing driving traffic to my website or is it helping me, um, you know, sell more products? And we know from social media that just because you tell your followers to buy your products, they're not always going to, or it's not necessarily a very direct route from call to action to conversion. Um, but that doesn't mean that social media isn't helping you sell more product or, you know, sign up more people um, for services. It just might be, that's the touch point, right? That's the first time they learn about you and now they wanna know more. So if you are able to drive them to your website, how are you um, telling that story so that they can get to the point, maybe in three more visits, um, to, to check out and buy or sign up. Um, so again, we have to think about this customer journey and we have to kind of think about the role that social media plays. No one ever, <laughs> very rarely, I should say, does something on social media just because they were told to do it, right? We might sign up for something, maybe we'll make a donation, but if we're gonna buy something, that's a really big investment for us. No matter how expensive the service is, we're sort of saying, okay, uh, all right, let's, am I doing this? Is this something that I want to invest in? Um, am I sure that this is the right move for me? Um, and the things that are going to persuade us, um, you know, kind of go back to the things that customers want. They want a timely response. That demonstrates responsibility and accountability and trustworthiness. Um, they want to engage directly with followers because it shows that you're a fun human being um, who you know wants to engage with your customers and learn from them and is able to answer questions in, in real time. Um, so again, you know, when we think about, okay, is my social media helping me to accomplish any of these goals? Well, what, you know, what are we doing to demonstrate um, that they should buy our product or sign up for our services. So we want to align those behaviors with the content that we're creating. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. So in order for your strategy to be effective, it really needs to match your bandwidth um, for uh, supporting it. And this is the sort of the second challenge that companies often face um, when using social media is that one, they're either just kind of doing a whole bunch of stuff and seeing what works, um, but then they fail to sort of sustain it over time. And social media, the algorithm or the algorithms um, really reward consistency um, and followers get into habits quite easily. So if they're regularly seeing your content and then one day they don't, they're gonna forget about you. And the algorithm is going to, 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 to make you have to start all over. Um, obviously we don't have a lot of insights about how 
the, the, the algorithms for different platforms work, right? Because they're not gonna tell us. Um, but what we do know suggests that the more consistently we post, the algorithms sort of get to know us. And they say, oh yeah, they post regularly um, and people engage with that content. So we can invest in them organically and let other people see that content over time. They have, they've proven to us that they're, they're in this for the long haul. The moment we sort of drop off with our posting and post more inconsistently, the algorithm fails to recognize us and it makes us sort of start all over. So even if you have been posting content regularly every other day, uh, once a week, whatever that consistency is. It doesn't have to be every day. It doesn't have to be multiple times a day. It just has to be consistently. So say you've been doing that for two months, right? And then you go on vacation or something else distracts you away from social media and you don't do it for two weeks. When you resume, it's kind of like starting over from scratch. Um, and you're going to have to, again, prove your consistency to those algorithms. So it's in our best efforts um, best in, or, you know, uh, it's in our best uh, uh, intentions to to um, to feed the social media monster, if you will, um, consistently. And in order to do that, we need to know what we can afford to do, um, afford in, in time and energy and yes, money. Um, because usually what happens is people get very excited, right? Oh my God, I'm gonna be on social media and I'm gonna be amazing. I'm going to get all these followers. They're going to love me. They're, it's amazing. Um, and we can probably sustain that energy for like two weeks and then we get distracted or something tear, you know, tears us away or we lose interest. Um, and we realize, oh my God, this is a lot of work and I don't have the bandwidth to keep up with this. Um, and you sort of drop off that consistency. So it's great to be excited about being on social media, um, but we wanna make sure that we're tempering our excitement to meet what we have the, cap the, the capacity to do. Um, so if you're a one person team, all right, let's figure out what you can do. How much of that content can you prepare in advance so that you can schedule it out over a, a window of time? Um, what are you, you know, already doing? We need to make it a part of our schedule because the other part of social media that's really hard to sustain and maintain is ma making it a priority. Um, we have, you know, laundry lists, uh, you know, of things that we need to do. And if social media is at the bottom or consistently gets moved to the next day's to-do list um, or it gets put on the back burner or it becomes one of those things where it's like, oh, if I have some time, I'll do that. It's never going to get done. Social media, to do it well, to do it effectively, has to be integrated into our daily routine. It has to be something that we do consistently every day, um, because again, we have to feed it, we have to give it love, we have to watch it grow, um, and, um, and that has to be a consistent part of our schedule. Um, so think about what you have the bandwidth to support. How many people will be involved in this? Um, you know, when you are giving it priority, um, you will make time for it. Um, the other part of that is if you enjoy it, you will make time for it. If social media is a chore, you're never going to do it. And that's okay. We just have to, you know, understand how we feel about it, um, you know, and, 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 you know, and realize that our behaviors um, are related to that. So consider what you have time to do before you establish those social media goals. Um, so if you're all about driving traffic to your website, okay, what types of content are most likely to do that? And how frequently can I create that type of content um, to you know, sustain that goal? Um, lack of time and resources are the biggest hurdles and challenges to businesses of all shapes and sizes, but especially small businesses, because again, you're doing everything. And the reason you started this business is because you have a passion for whatever you do, not because you have a passion for social media. Now, hopefully we can align those passions together so that it's fun and you want to do it and you can tell your story and share that passion um, with your followers. Um, but if it, you know, if it doesn't spark joy, um, we might have, you know, it, it might be one of those areas that we just sort of eliminate from our marketing strategy. And again, that's okay. Um, so let's make social media fun. Um, and again, we're not trying to force fun on anyone, um, but here are some tips and tricks um, that you can employ 
um, to make it fun for you, which will then in turn make it fun for your followers. We know what it's like to stand next to the interesting person at a cocktail party or a happy hour or a networking event, right? We want to be around that person. They tell funny stories. They're educational. They're fun. To, you know, they always have a fun fact. Um, they always have a great story to tell. Um, so let's try to tap into, you know, our interesting person, um, you know, mentality when we're on social media. Those are the people that you know, want to be involved. Um, and when, you know, they see that we're having fun, um, you know, they're going to have fun too. So think about what you love most about your company or your brand. Um, maybe there's a fun backstory. How did it get started? Do people know that story? Maybe not. Um, and again, that's, you know, maybe a theme that runs through a lot of your content. Um, is there something that makes your products different or unique? Um, so is there something that stands out? Do you use a special material, a, a, you know, a unique process? Um, you know, what is that thing that sets you apart from your competition? I can buy this product anywhere, but why should I buy it from you? What makes it stand out? That, that value add is going to speak to people, right? Because people like when something's different and fun and unique, um, because then they get to talk about it, right? Oh, why did you choose those shoes? Oh my God, they're made from, you know, they're made from recycled water bottles, right? That's a fun thing that people get to talk about. Um, who are the people who run your business? You know, what's your backstory? What's your, you know, what, what cool thing did you used to do before you decided to do this? Or maybe you've always known that this is what you wanted to do. That, those are stories people love. And, you know, these types of questions may seem obvious to us, but they're not obvious to our customers, right? We, we know these answers because we live and breathe them, but our customers don't know the story and they love to hear this. They love to know that when they're putting their dollars is make, you know, is a part of something real um, and interesting and fun and, and valuable. Um, so think about, you know, how your product or service helps others. Do you, you know, regularly give back to the community? Um, again, you know, how, how are you making a difference in, in, in your community? People like to be a part of something that's bigger than them. You know, we can buy from anyone now. Um, why should I be giving, you know, my hard-earned dollars to, to your company? It's because maybe you support the values I have or that you, you support the causes that I, I you know, I want to support. Um, so again, it kind of goes beyond, you know, you know, the product and more about the experience um, that it creates as an extension of that product. Um, so figure out what your story is. Um, and then again, when we feel excited by something, we want to tell people about it. Um, when we're excited about things, people, other people get excited about it, right? Even if it's something that they would never have dreamt to be excited about, you know, oh, how do widgets get made? I don't know, but now I know, and I can't stop telling people. Um, and so it, again, that, that, that excitement is palatable. It, it, it's contagious in a way. Um, uh, and, and the best part of this is that when we get excited about something, it stops being a chore. It becomes something we want to do. And when we want to do something, we make the time, we make the effort, we allocate the resources um, to making it a priority. So it's this really nice, you know, arc to, to getting something done um, because you're really excited about doing it. Um, so commit to, you know, once you figure out what your story is, commit to creating and publishing content on a regular basis. Um, share with you know, that story with your audience. Cross post to different networks. Um, add interesting captions. Use your authentic voice. Customers, we're very savvy now. We know when we're being, you know, talked to in a corporate voice or, you know, by our robot. But you're not a robot. You're a human person um, with interesting stories and, you know, a captivating personality um, and a real authentic voice. And that authentic voice is what's going to connect with your audience um, because they're going to feel like they know you. And when we know that there is a person behind a company, we feel more connected, right? We, you know, it's, it's, we, we like knowing people. We like feeling connected to things. Um, and that ampl helps amplify your message. Um, it helps spread that word of mouth. Um, and so it sort of helps facilitate, um, the, you know, the natural uh, amplification of, of, of your brand voice. Um, yes, so when social media becomes, 
uh, a part of our regular schedule, it becomes more integrated into our habits. Um, and that's amazing, right? Because um, it becomes as natural to us as our morning cup of coffee, right? Um, and it's something that um, just gets done. We don't really necessarily have to think about it. It becomes a little bit more automated. Um, and I can imagine, you know, for, for, well, I know for many small business owners, social media is sort of that extra thing. Oh, I'll get around to it. I don't, I don't have time for it right now. Or, oh, I've been meaning to, to do this thing. Um, you're never going to do it if it's not uh, integrated into your regular daily schedule. Um, so once we reach sort of that point where social media becomes just the next thing on our to-do list, it becomes ingrained in the culture, um, it becomes a priority for the organization, and it's supported by the organization, right? So other people say, oh, okay, we're all investing in this. And then they can share their voice too, and, and they can lend um, their narrative to the story. Um, and because I'm sure that there are, are a lot of interesting people who work uh, with you on your behalf um, whose stories can captivate and capture the attention of your users um, as well. So when it becomes a habit, we change our behaviors to accommodate it, we give it more time, we give it resources, and we start to become better at it, right? We, you know, a month ago, we couldn't think of doing a TikTok video, and now we do it regularly. Or, you know, we never thought that we would be putting together Instagram posts, and now it's just become um, a part of our regular routine, and we're trying out new filters, or we're adding, you know, product tags, or we're learning the art of the hashtag, right? Um, we, you know, our, our competency at it becomes better over time because we get more familiar with it. It becomes less scary to us, and it becomes, uh, you know, something kind of fun, and we can experiment with it. Um, so, you know, I, I, again, when we, in order to be effective at social media, we have to integrate it into our our regular schedule, which takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. But if we make these small tweaks, um, you know, to our to-do lists and, and incorporate them into our team goals, um, slowly it becomes a, a part of our regular schedule. Um, which then leads to this question, well, is it working, right? And, you know, I've been doing this. We've been consistent at it. We're integrated into our regular routine. But how do I know it's working? So let's go back to those goals. What were you trying to accomplish? Okay, let's measure it. Did we get more traffic to the website? Um, you know, is it coming from these social media channels? What links when we're sharing get the most traffic? Um, where are they going after they have clicked on that link on the website? Um, I had a client once who was launching a new product and it was a higher price point. And we learned, um, you know, through our analytics that it took uh, a person three visits to the website before they would convert. The first, they click on the link, they were curious. Is this a legitimate site? Does it look good? Does it make me feel like I can trust them? Okay, second visit, I'm going to look at the product page um, and, uh, you know, kind of, you know, read reviews and kind of, you know, consume a lot of this educational material. And then the third time I would come back, they would come back and commit to buying it. Okay, that's great insight. Okay, so now maybe our goal changes and says, okay, we were able to drive traffic to our website. Now we're going to drive traffic to the website with the goal of converting them in two steps, right? We're going to try to eliminate that third visit. Um, okay, so what do we need to do? Okay, the first, they, the first visit is just to make sure that we're legitimate. So if they're going to look at one page on the website, well, how much information can we give them um, that's going to help, uh, you know, feed their need uh, for trustworthiness, okay? So maybe it's a seal of approval, maybe it's a testimonial. Um, and then uh, the, the second time they come to the site, we're giving them reviews, we're giving them 360 views of the product, or we're giving them a, a video tutorial, um, something that's going to um, convince them more information um, in sort of one stop. So we're trying to condense that three steps into two steps. Right? So that is something that we can work towards um, in sort of evaluating if social media is working. It's not going to be, um, un, you know, for, for better or for worse, there's never going to be a like, if I do A plus B, I'll get C, you know, wipe my hands clean, I'll just do this forever, right? And it will always work. We're constantly learning. 
our, our, our audience is constantly evolving, their behaviors are changing, and we need to sort of keep up with that so that we can be giving them content that meets their needs consistently over time. Look at the photos or the, you know, the visuals that you are sharing on social media. What types of content are getting the most engagement? Um, is it the behind the scenes photo or is it the professional photo shoot? Um, is it when there's people in the photo or is it when it's product based, right? So you'll start to see some trends sort of naturally emerge. What are people more likely to, to gravitate towards? Um, are they going to watch a three minute video or are they watching the 30 second clip? Um, again, so we'll start to some um, behaviors will start to emerge, which will give you indicators that say, okay, we're going to spend more time creating this type of content because it engages people better. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to abandon the other types of content, but we have to go in with our different expectations. Um, you know, I, again, and then the idea of, you know, is your content doing what it's supposed to? What are you noticing? That people are commenting or they're sharing, um, but they're not clicking or they're, they're clicking and then abandoning. Kind of figuring out those different layers and, and how you can sort of be presenting them information at those, those moments um, that may convince them to continue on. Maybe you realize that you have a very chatty follower base. Okay, keep asking them questions because you're going to try to elicit information that's going to help you um, make other, you know, better informed decisions. Um, maybe you have an audience that doesn't say anything. Okay, well then let's give them something to read. Let's give them a reuse um, to contemplate. Let's tell them all the really cool stuff about the product because they're going to be consuming it. They just might not feel comfortable commenting um, or engaging in some other way. There may be tangible versus intangible um, indicators that your content is working. If people are coming into your store and they're talking about how they saw your latest video, that's an indicator that they're paying attention. Um, or maybe if you've been posting more educational content um, that tells them more about how the product works or how the service is done, um, and they're asking different types of questions, that's an intangible uh, result, right? They're more informed. A more informed customer makes it so they quickly, they convert quicker because they, all of their basic questions have already been answered before they get to talk to a human being. That's great. You can have better, high, more high level discussions with them um, because they're, they're interested um, to have that additional information um, rather than having to, you know, take up everyone's time answering those most basic questions um, because they weren't finding the answers so readily. So there are going to be different indicators. It's, you know, again, it, it's, you know, I wish I could tell everyone like, oh, to pay attention to this and look for this. And if you see this number, it'll mean this. But it's really different from every business, which is exciting, but also really frustrating. I get it. Um, but you know your business better than anyone, and you hopefully know your audience better than any, everyone. So you'll be highly in tune to these different types of uh, behaviors engagement along the way. Um, the data can give you a lot of great insights. Um, so things that you want to pay attention to are, again, what posts are, are being viewed by the most people, the most engagement, the, the posts that maybe are driving the most traffic. Um, if you're looking at your website, um, you know, how much time is spent on the website. Again, you know, someone who looks at a site and quickly leaves may, that might just not be for them. But someone who lingers on your site a little longer, it may not be an indicator that they love your website. It might be that they're having a hard time finding information. So we want to kind of carefully, carefully balance, like, what is the correct amount of time that someone needs to spend on your site um, before leaving? Um, too long on the page may indicate that they, um, they just couldn't find what they're looking for. That, so that might be helpful for you to sort of more streamline content so it's more readily available. Are new users versus returning users to your site? And, you know, which social media traffic is providing the most traffic? It might surprise you. Um, and so that might be, give, be an, a good indicator that you need to pivot um, or, you know, to another network um, or that maybe you just need to refine, you know, retune your, your, refine your goals um, for how social media is, is to be used by you. Um, and then, you know, human behaviors, right? We want to observe, you know, we, we, if, if we're a small local business, we might recognize the people that, that consistently interact with our posts. Um, and maybe 
we give them a shout out, or maybe we reach out to them offline and say, Hey, thanks so much for always liking our content. You know, here's a gift card or here's a, you know, a promo code, um, or, Hey, maybe you would love to become a brand ambassador. Um, you seem to, you know, when, you know, when you share these posts, it gets a lot of interactions. Um, you know, maybe we can, we can partner together. Um, Probably the best indicator or one of the best indicators of is your social media strategy working is, is it worth your time and effort, right? Um, are you, you know, pay attention to that emotional reaction when you see the data. Oh, oh, I thought we were doing better or, oh, that's really disappointing, you know, or so, um, or, you know, if you just get exasperated, like, oh, I worked so hard on that video and no one saw it right? Pay attention to, to those, that emotional reaction, because that's going to be an indicator of, ooh, maybe we're putting a little too much more time on this than is getting noticed. So let's retool um, that or refocus our efforts in, in different ways. Um, you know, maybe it doesn't really matter if how much time I spend editing that video. Um, the rough cut gets just as much engagement or the, un, you know, the unfiltered video or photo gets just as much attention as the the professional you know edit, edited one um, so sometimes it can give us sort of some clarity that says you know what we don't really need to be perfect um, to get people's attention we can just be focused more on getting the information out and not necessarily having to worry about if it's polished or not um, look for new opportunities um, in in your results um, you know, maybe, especially from a bandwidth perspective, as you get better at prioritizing your social media needs, you might find that you're duplicating efforts, or you might find that there's an easier way to get things done or to share information with your team. Um, you're going to get better at it. So where are those refinements? Um, so that you can say, you know what, for every five hours we spend on social, you know, putting on, you know, posting to social media um, and creating for social media, we're getting a return on investment, right? Um, it's worth that amount of time that we're spending on it. Um, and let's be reasonable. And maybe in the beginning, we're spending a little bit more time creating and publishing that content um, than we're getting a return on. But over time, as we get better, maybe that that the time comes down and, and the benefit gets bigger. Um, and then, you know, we want to integrate those experiences throughout the customer journey. Remember, social media is just one of those touch points. You have a lot more touch points with your audience. So when they are in your store, talk to them. Do you follow us on social media? Put it in your email signature. Put it on your business cards. Put it, you know, put a sign in the store that reminds them to follow them. Um, so again, integrate it. Don't just assume that people are going to know that you're on social media. Don't just assume that, you know, that they're already following you. Um, use it as a way to sort of say, hey, don't forget to follow us on, you know, this channel. Um, we often share behind the scenes, you know, videos of how the products get made. Or we love sharing customer testimonials. We hope that you'll share yours as well. So again, reinforcing that, that social media. You know, again, we would do it with any other form, right? Did you see our commercial? Did you see our billboard? Did you see our ad in the magazine? We would want other people to know what we're doing um, in those on those platforms. Remind, you know, don't take social media for granted. Uh, again, depending on who your audience is, sometimes it might be second nature to them. And sometimes it might just be an afterthought. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, I should follow you on Twitter. Thank you so much. Um, so don't limit just, you, you know, your, your promotion on social media to social media itself. Have those in real life uh, conversations. Con uh, additionally, you know, if you are a great storyteller on social media, be a great storyteller in store, right? Make sure that the consistency um, exists. Um, if you're really charming and engaging and responsive on social media, you should be charming and engaging and responsive on the phone, on email, in your store. It all needs to be um, working together because if it's not, it creates a sort of this disruption um, and, and this disconnect for users because they get to know you on social media and they're like, oh my God, they're amazing. Hey, but when I call them on the phone, they seem off. That didn't, that wasn't a congruent experience. And now they're confused. Um, same, you know, if you're, you know, making sure that the logos are consistent everywhere, any sort of break in that consistency confuses the user, confuses the customer, and it, it creates a sense of distrust, right? Ooh, well, that's weird. That, feel, that felt off. 
can I really trust this company? So that consistency really matters. Um, so don't just limit you know, your fun, engaging self to social media. Um, you know, bring it, make it a, a, a company-wide uh, initiative. Um, <laughs> and so <laughs> most people are, are disappointed to know that there isn't an exact formula for success on social media. Um, but that just means that there's more than one way to be good at it, right? And so there's room for experimentation. There's room to you know, have fun and make mistakes and learn from them and try new things. Um, so start with your basics. You know, think about your, community, uh, your communication strategy, understand who your audience is, understand you know, the platforms that are more eff most effective for reaching them. Um, know the message that you want to communicate to them. What is important? What are you dying your, for your audience to know more about you? What do they not understand? And maybe this, if they just knew this one piece of information about you, that would you know, seal the deal. So again, think about the, the, those, those basic communication uh, concepts. Set your goals and expectations. Social media is what you make out of it. Um, if you immerse yourself into it, um, I can't promise that you're going to, you know, be amazing at it, but you're probably going to have a little bit more fun than if it's something that you're sort of, you know, keeping it at arm's length. Um, it, if you hate being on social media, <laughs> there's no amount of being on social media that's going to make it better <laughs> in most instances. Um, if you just don't enjoy being there, don't be there. No one wants to force someone to go to a cocktail party or a networking event, right? They don't, they're not really fun to hang out with. Um, and there's probably something else they would enjoy doing that they would much rather, you know, that they're going to be more pleasant about being. Um, so identify what you want to get out of social media. Be very clear to your team um, so that you can measure it effectively. Identify the time and resources you're willing to dedicate to it. You know what? Hey, social media is a big thing. We learn that most of our customers learn about us on social media before they, they commit. Um, so, you know, what? we're going to have to invest a little bit more time and energy. Um, and that means maybe taking our focus away from this area um, or, you know, adding a little bit more, you know, time and resources to, you know, different people's schedules. Um, create and publish uh, content consistently. Um, so again, you know, planning it out, right? Social media is not something that we just make up um, and that we do on a whim. It is very strategic. It does take a lot of planning. Um, so if you can create all your content for the month in advance and then schedule it out for the month, wow, that frees you up, right? Rather than having to rack our brain every day, oh, we should post on social media, what do we wanna talk about? Plan that content out in advance. You'll start to see some trends emerge. You'll start to see some categories of content, um, the different types of content. We wanna plan in advance. If we're planning a video, we need time for that. Um, so, you know, be, let's be respectful of, you know, supply chain issues, right? Or shipping issues, um, you know, product uh, availability issues. Um, you know, the holidays are coming up. Let your audience know the last possible day they can, you know, buy and have that product arrive in time for the holidays. Um, that is content that needs to be planned out. Um, and, and you need, so the big picture and the little picture so that you can best support it, right? Because no one likes to surprises and no one likes to create content, you know, in a frantic, you know, moment, that's not good content. Um, know what to measure both quantitatively and qualitatively. That qualitatively comes from the conversations that you have with your, with your, your customers. Hey, did you notice that? What did you think? Get your feedback, you know, or, or maybe they're going to talk to you. Oh my God, I love that video. That was so great. Oh, I shared that with everyone I knew. That's, that's, you know, that's not quantitative data, but that's really good qualitative data. That's stuff that's going to help you understand what type of content your, your customers respond to. Um, so, and then refine and repeat. It's a customer journey is a circular, the social media is a circular uh, experience. Um, there is no, you know, there might be a, a very <laughs> uh, stark beginning, but the end is really reliant on you learning from what worked, um, stop doing what doesn't, and continuing on and refining that process to make it better so that it's more streamlined, you're working more effectively, more efficiently, um, and you're getting what you want out of it. Um, if at any point all of this sort of falls apart and you're like, you know what, it's not worth it anymore, great. Just communicate that with your audience effectively. Hey, you know what, we gave this our best shot, but we're not really getting what we want out of this. So, you know, we're going to close down our page and, you know, or maybe we're moving to this other network. 
Um, or, you know, hey, if you have any questions, email us, give us a phone call. We would love to chat with you in person, right? Whatever you decide to do, just own it. Uh, people respond very well to, to that authenticity, um, that candor that says, you know what? We wanted this to work. We just didn't have the time and resources that it requires, and that's okay. So we're going to do this other thing. We're going to do the stuff that we're really good at. We're going to do community events. We're going to do in-store promotions. We're going to do, you know, email marketing. Um, whatever you decide to do, just know that, you know, there's a reason for why you decided to do that and communicate that effectively. Um, and I leave you with this. Don't work for social media. Make it work for you. Um, you are under no obligation um, to have a Facebook page or an Instagram handle. Um, do it because you want it. Do it because there's something in it for you and there's something in it for your audience. Um, and, and identifying what those things are uh, is sort of the secret sauce to social media because you know, people are going to ask you, you know, oh, why are you on social media? You should have an answer to that question. Oh, we love it because we're able to learn so much more about our audience or we're able to share sort of the behind the scenes or that special story um, with our customers. And that helps them, you know, understand, um, you know, why our products are so important or why our contribution to the community is so important. So again, go back to social media uh, and, and, sort of identify how it can work for you, um, not the other way around. All right, so <laughs> we've got about 10 minutes. Um, if there are any questions, um, I'm happy to answer them. Um, and if you, you can always email me um, those questions um, as well. Happy to help. So I hope this was helpful. I know this was kind of a lot of information. Um, but I hope that it was helpful regardless. Yeah, so while people are typing in some questions, I had one that was emailed earlier today. Um, so Marissa, how does one balance essentially the learning curve of being competent at social media with essentially managing your social media strategy? Like, is there a certain way that you recommend them doing things, just diving in all at once or? So yeah, it's a great, I mean, I think everyone is different. What I sort of tend to recommend to people who may not be active on social media personally is to, um, just as you're going to try to integrate your social media activity professionally into your, your regular routine, spend some time integrating your personal use of social media into that schedule as well. And so a lot of times for, for avid social media users, sometimes it's the first thing we look at when we, we, we wake up or the last thing we look at before we go to bed. Don't need, think you need to take it that far. You can just say, okay, I'm going to have my morning cup of coffee and I am going to go through my stream and, you know, and I'm going to actively follow two new people and I'm going to like some content. Okay. I do that for 10 minutes in the morning over my morning cup of coffee. I'm gonna take a lunch break and do the same thing, maybe for five minutes. Okay, I'm gonna look at this feed. I'm gonna see what's going on. Um, and then again, you know, when you're having your, your evening glass of wine, you know, uh, you're putting on that Hallmark Christmas movie, <laughs> and, you, know, uh, you know, go through your, your mobile feeds for five minutes. You will, and, and, and set your, give yourself sort of, um, you know, expectations, right? You don't have to create any content for yourself. You don't have to engage with anyone. Maybe it's just, I'm going to look at it and see what other people are posting, or I'm going to follow five interesting people today. Um, uh, and so you, you, and what this does is that when you sort of get in the habit of doing it, you start to learn all kinds of crazy stuff and you start to be more comfortable in this environment. Um, and at first, you know, that first week that you're doing it, you may think, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to see what other people are posting. And by that second week, now you're replying. They're asking questions and you're giving answers. Or maybe you feel more comfortable asking a question and getting answers. You start to become more immersed in it, right? No one expects anyone to be an expert and, you know, but we all have different levels of, of comfort with, you know, getting more familiar with something. Usually the more familiar we get with something, the more comfortable we kind of let down our guard, we become less vulnerable, we become, you know, more interested and more curious about how to do something. Oh, how did they get that filter? How did they do that? How did they do that tagging? Um, so it becomes a, a part of our, you know, sort of uh, routine, both personally and professionally. So I would do those two things in tandem, um, you know, to sort of 
get you more comfortable with the platforms in a low expectation environment. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was excellent. I really like how you broke it down into just following, not even <laughs> right. posting. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so oh, we I have, can... oh, are you able to see the question? I am looking at the, the chat right now. Thanks I'll let you it. go for it. No worries. So John says, if you have no interest or competencies in social media, what is the best way to search and identify social media contractors to support you for a small one person business? Excellent question. Um, it, you know, again, it's understanding what the value add is for your business, really identifying those goals. Um, there are definitely social media consultants out there who are going to say, oh, I'm going to get you a million fans over tonight, or you could have a great big audience. If you don't want a great big audience or you don't need a great big audience, you know, that might not be the right fit. So first and foremost, you want to make sure that everyone sort of understands what it is that you're trying to accomplish, right? I don't need anything fancy. I just need to post consistently. I'm trying to drive traffic to the website or I'm trying to, you know, get people excited for our new product release. Um, and so I need posts, you know, that speak to that. Um, or I need someone who can take photos and videos of us in the shop and you, you know, and, and create posts out of that. Or we're having this event and it would be great if someone could come to the event and cover it and take video and, 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 and photos um, and, you know, and help us support, you know, our social media feed that way. So it's just aligning your expectations. Um, I do kind of recommend that even if you know that you're going to hire a social media consultant, do it for yourself for maybe about two weeks. So you really do appreciate the time and effort um, that goes into, um, you know, supporting a social media uh, channel or, you know, our presence um, because it, there's a value add, right? So just as you pay your accountant, just as you, you know, pay your vendors for the resources, social media consultants are providing a valuable service as well. Um, so, Sometimes it helps us to get a better feel of like, what do you actually do? And, you know, is it really worth what you're telling me, you know, I should pay you? Um, having that firsthand experience can sometimes, you know, kind of open our eyes and be like, oh yeah, that was a lot of work. I totally get it. Um, the other thing too is, is, is under, you know, understanding the bandwidth, right? And understanding how much time it really does take. Um, sometimes 10 hours a week is enough right? Or five hours a week is enough, depending on what your goals are. So it can really help you sort of align with your consultant and say, look, I need some help. I don't need a crazy amount of help. I need maybe three posts a week on these two platforms. Um, you know, I would love to review that content and, you know, ideate with you about that content, but I just need someone to create a post and then manage, you know, that, that presence. Um, so I, I think the, the, I think the, the most challenging part about hiring a consultant for something that you don't actively, you know, know how to do is to really trust in what are you getting from it. Um, so having those really upfront conversations to begin with, um, I, I definitely recommend starting off slow with a consultant and then oh, you could always ramp up. It's sometimes harder to go in that opposite direction. Um, if you start off doing too much and then you realize that, you know, it's just not working out and you want to scale back, that can be a harder thing to do. So start off slow, get a feel for it, get them immersed in what it means to be your brand, right? Make sure that they understand your voice and they understand that story. Um, they, you know, their services will be invaluable to you because it's freeing up your time and energy to do other things. Um, but it's only going to be helpful if you're all on the same page together. So I hope, I hope that helps. Oh, but searching for it. the hub is actually, I'm going to put a plug in for the, for the hub. Um, a lot of our students um, have a lot of experience managing social media for a variety of brands. Um, and so they um, are always looking for internships or paid opportunities. Um, so if you, there is a, um, I will share the link with Madeline after this and she can send it to you, but there is a form that you can fill out if you want to request student services um, you know, for your, for your small businesses and we can help find, you know, the perfect student, um, to help work with you. 
And I'll just plug on that plug um, <laughs> because in, starting in January, we are going to be having um, one on one consultation sessions with the brand hub at the public library. So I believe it's the third Thursday at noon. Mm -hmm. You're welcome to come into the library yeah. and just sit down and we can chat and get some really great feedback from some amazing advertising uh, professors, students and alumni. Yeah, absolutely. No, hopefully you'll be able to join us. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, do we have other questions from some of the participants tonight? I know um, it kind of, I, I really loved your one snippet of information that really focused on how just not only making it work from you, but listening to how you're responding to how you're feeling about yeah. these specific posts. All right. We have, I am not local. Can I contact yes, the resources? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, yes. Those resource, student resources are available for, for anyone who, who, who would need them. And even, them. yeah, and even our library programming, um, if you're able to come in person, you don't have to be a resident of Champaign uh, to attend any of our programs. But yes, I, John, I'll share that link with Madeline and, and she'll be sure to share it to everyone who attended tonight so that you can have that. Yep, I'll be sending out a copy um, along with uh, the recording of the webinar because I know people are going to refer back to it. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, it looks like I don't think we'll have any additional questions. So on that note, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us this evening for um, how to essentially create your winning social media strategy. Um, thank you again, Marissa, for joining us tonight. And a big thanks to the Brand Hub at UIUC for uh, connecting myself with Marissa. And I look forward to see you all. Uh, I believe on Thursday, we do have a webinar that's all about starting a nonprofit in Central Illinois. So feel free to tune in or reach out if you'd like some more information on that. And I know that we're going to be staying in contact regarding the Brand Hub and whatever Marissa has going on. Um, but Marissa, where would people reach you at if they wanted to learn more about what you do? Um, you can reach me at strategicpeacock.com. Um, that's for my social media consultancy services um, or media.illinois.edu uh, to learn more about the College of Media. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you again. And thank again to everyone who joined this evening and who will enjoy the recording of the webinar. So have a wonderful Monday evening and stay warm. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye.